Jordan Peterson unleashed a tirade against the whole idea of Pride Month. This is fantastic. I want you to see this clip, which was aired on Fox News. And I've taken it, so hopefully Fox News won't give me a problem and take my video down for sharing their story of the interview with Jordan Peterson. But uh, I, as long as it's up and you get to see it, great. I want to share it. I thought a lot of what he said was right on, including uh, his reference to the term monsters, right? You'll see what he, what he says about that towards the end of it. This is about five minutes long, and he'll talk about monsters. Well, it, as a Christian, we use a different term for what he's saying is monsters. I'll explain a little more at the end of the clip. But let's get into it now. It's about five minutes, as I said, and every so often Fox News put in B-roll footages over the screen of him talking, showing pride parades and imagery that goes with that. I don't like that. So I just simply replaced it by putting most of the screen a still picture of Jordan Peterson until it cut back to him speaking again. So you'll see that throughout the five minutes, and then I'll be back at the end. So here it is. What are my, th my thoughts about Pride Month? Well, the first thing I would say is that you should be very careful what you name things. And pride is not a virtue. And I've brought that up with people before, and their objection always is, well, they don't really mean pride. People are just trying to affirm their own identities. And, you know, fair enough, I suppose, to some degree, but that was the name that was chosen and that's the name that stuck and pride is a cardinal sin and there's a reason for that and the reason is is that pride means something like stubborn refusal to change when evidence of error is accruing and it's not a good thing there's a real tinge of narcissism sexual narcissism about the whole pride spectacle and you know do people have the right to express their sexuality the way they see fit? Um, to some degree, if it's consensual and among adults, but generally among human beings with any degree of civilized comportment whatsoever, it's a pretty damn private affair. We tend to be private uh, in our sexual conduct as a species. And so this isn't exactly private. And it's also the case that identities based on something as narrow as sexual desire, let's say, aren't identities at all. They're pronouncements of subjection to instinctual whim. And I also have a real problem with the idea of the LGBT plus, et cetera, community, because it's not a community. And it's especially not a community right now because the trans pushing, gender affirming butchers and liars primarily target young people whose most likely outcome on the sexual front is homosexuality. So the transgender affirming butchers and liars are differentially destroying the youthful gay community. And that's not a community by any stretch of the imagination. And there's a famous conservative thinker, Chesterton, and Chesterton has a, a, a concept, the fence, and his Chesterton's fence is based on the observation that if you're walking somewhere you don't understand and you come across a fence, you should probably not tear it down because you don't know what it keeps in or out. And the pride movement has torn down a lot of fences and maybe some of those fences needed to go, but all of them didn't need to go. And there's plenty of monsters coming out to play now. And I would say that's especially true on the transgender affirming side. And that's why we're seeing this butchery in the medical community, abetted by idiot allies and driven by greed. And those aren't the worst monsters that exist. And so if you tear down enough fences, you're going to find out what they're for. Now, I read recently, like this week, that support for gay marriage is plummeting. Right. It's like, well, keep pushing, keep pushing. You're going to lose everything you've gained. And I'm not celebrating that at all. That's not the point at all. But 
Like, I'm just done with it. I don't like the flag. I think it's a piece of idiocy. I don't understand why it changes every bloody week. I don't know who makes those decisions. I don't like the acronym and all the mystery surrounding it. I don't like the fact that the LGBT agenda, whatever that is, increasingly dominates the school system. I don't like the fact that it's targeted at young people. And I think the surgery, the gender affirming care movement, I think it is Nazi Auschwitz level awful that they should not only stop and now, as they've decided to do in the UK and in most places in Europe, but I think all the people that were involved in the surgical transition of minors should be imprisoned. So there's a lot of house cleaning to do on the pride side of things. And I don't believe that a celebration of an identity that encapsulates something like 3% of the population before it became a fad is is inclusive in any manner whatsoever. So I think all of it's, pretty much all of it's a lie. And it's a dangerous lie. And it's a lie with real monsters hovering on the edges. Mm -hmm. And so, and like enough, as far as I'm concerned, enough, enough pride in the churches, enough pride in the bloody banks. I don't wanna walk into the bank of Nova Scotia and be celebrating pride. It's like, I wanna go and put my money in or take my money out without any political idiocy and certainly without any celebration of sexuality. I don't know what the hell the banks think they're doing. And the churches, well, that's just for the churches to be flying pride flags. It's like pride is the cardinal Christian sin, right? So what the hell? What's going on with the flags exactly? What exactly are you celebrating here? Tolerance. It's like, yeah, tolerance of vice is not a virtue and pride is a vice. Pride is a vice. Well said. Well, I just want to wrap this up. I uh, wanted to share that mainly, but I, I mentioned the monsters thing at the beginning. And for Christians, this is demonic forces. And they're very real. They're as, very, they're as real as the nose on your face and the nose on my face, right? I know they're invisible, but the evidence of their influence is very visible. We see it in the lives that are just being destroyed by demonic forces all the time. And I want to say that um, Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, verse 12, when we think about what, who, what's the battle against? Is it against the people that are lost? Or do we want to reach the lost so they'll know Christ? Is our battle with them? Or is it against Satan and demonic forces? Well, it's against Satan and demonic forces. Paul wrote in verse 12 of Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Our battle is not against the people. It's against Satan and demonic forces. And we battle that by prayer, by reading God's word, edifying one another, and doing the work of ministry to reach the lost so that they can know Christ being light and hope in the world for the lost. And, and this is pretty much it. This is our weapons against Satan and, and, and demonic forces. So, um, yeah, monsters is what Jordan Peterson said. I call them demons. And this realm we live in that we can visibly see I know this is a little bit mind-blowing concept, but the fact is it's not as real as where we're going one day, right? All of eternity, forever and ever, we're going to be in that spiritual realm. That realm is more real and permanent than what we have today, which is fleeting. The flesh is going away. The entire earth is going to be destroyed by fire one day, and God is going to completely recreate it. New heaven and new earth. That's what the Bible tells us. I believe it. And that means that that eternity that we're going to be in there, that is what's really real and permanent and forever. And I hope you're going to be there with me. And you will if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on his death, burial, and resurrection, believing and receiving God's gift of grace through faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation. So believe in him today if you haven't. Don't be part of this lost world and trust in the Holy Spirit to lead you. Uh, into the ways that God would like to bring you into so you can make a difference in this world, helping others to know Christ. Anyway, that's my hope and prayer today. And may the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.